Welcome to my channel, Living Linux. Today I'm using the Mikotronics R58X to record the screen of the R58. So my R58X has four gigabytes of memory, as you can see here. And now we will go to the screen of the R58. So here we have the R58 and here you can see that this one has eight gigabytes of memory. So this is a different machine. So first we'll try the performance of PPSSPP. And we'll test it with God of War, Chains of Olympus. And let's see. We can load a previous state and just to check, we have the rendering resolution set to four times PSP. And the upscale level is three times. And we have the frame counter at the top. So from a performance perspective, this all looks good. Well, I do see some dips now. I think I even saw 37. So when we take the rendering resolution back to three times, And then we no longer see any frame drops. So for now, this looks like a very good experience. And who knows in the future when we get updated drivers from Rockchip, perhaps the performance will improve a bit more. So I guess this is enough for God of War with the PlayStation Portable emulator. And with the R58X with an earlier build of Android, I also tested Ether SX2, which is a PlayStation 2 emulator. So I'm using the Vulkan engine and last time I used the OpenGL engine because in my test it was a bit faster. I have set it to three times upscaling and 
we'll go to the demi attack again. So let's load that scene again. So here we go. We attack. And here comes the counter attack. And now you see that it dropped like to 35, something like that. So three times upscaling might be a bit too much. At least for this particular scenario. So when we take it back to two times. And then we try to trigger that demi attack again. So here it comes. So I think it dropped to like 57, but without the counter, then you probably wouldn't have noticed. So it looks like two times upscaling. That is uh, the best option for now for a smooth experience. And one of my subscribers, he asked if I could test SV player. So this is a program for a uh, smooth uh, transition to higher frame rates. So when you first start it, it will do a benchmark. And apparently, according to the benchmark, it should be fine up to 72 frames per second. Anything above that, well, it's not guaranteed to have a smooth experience. And you can also activate some... Oh. Uh, stats for nerds. So I'm going with the default upscaling filters and I'm going to activate the stats for nerds and it will use hardware decoding. So I downloaded a movie from Blender Spring and this one is 24 frames per second and the program will do a smooth transition to 60 frames per second and in the stats for nerds mode um, it will try to show you the difference um, well to be really honest i i personally don't see much difference um, perhaps with other videos it's more visible and when you don't like that slider then you have to deactivate stats for nerds so when we play it now it will play it just like any video player uh, one of the disadvantages is that the free version I think it will stop after five minutes uh, so if you want to watch something longer then yeah probably you have to go for the paid version I think it's something like five or six euros from the top of my head something like that um, well, I'm happy with uh, something like VLC, so I don't see the point for myself to buy it. But um, yeah, like I said, it was for one of my subscribers who wanted to know if it works on the Micotronics with the Rockchip RK3588. So... This was just 
a quick test with uh, screen recording the R58 from the R58X. And the only problem I have is that it doesn't record the audio properly, or at least not together with the uh, microphone. So I have to investigate further if I can make it work um, because I'm currently recording the audio uh, on my phone. So that's all for now and I hope to see you again in my next video.